So good morning, everyone, and uh, thanks for joining the webinar today. Uh, I'm Sumit Chandra Sharma, uh, Head of Oracle Sales and Solution at Sunera Tech. Uh, been in industry for close to 19 years and have worked extensively on EBS implementations. I have worked extensively on upgrades, rollouts, managed services. And uh, uh, since session today is upgrade, I wanted to highlight I have been an upgrade specialist for more than 13 years, and I personally delivered over two dozen colleagues. Uh, I'm joined by our CEO, Ravi Raddi, who has been a veteran in the industry for over two decades and has helped build enterprise solution BU for large uh, global technology leader. Uh, he is on Oracle Cloud Partner Advisory Board and I have invited him to share some insights on where Oracle is heading, and he'll uh, talk about uh, uh, all this shortly. Uh, I'm joined by Srikant, our uh, principal EBS and cloud architect, over uh, having over uh, two decades of uh, experience and uh, delivering digital transformation across several multi-billion dollar organizations. And uh, he is going to talk about how we have automated the whole EBS upgrades for dozens of our customers. And I would recommend you to have your questions ready because uh, let's shoot to him when his turn comes and let's get clarifications of all the questions and doubts we may have. So moving forward, uh, uh, what we want in the session today, uh, as a takeaway from this webinar, I want you to take three things. Number one, why should you stay on a supported EBS version? Number two, what's in it for you to migrate EBS to cloud? And third, how can you cut down the upgrade time and upgrade cost in half while mitigating all the risks that are associated? So that's what I intend to cover in the next uh, 40 minutes. Uh, let me start by inviting Ravi, our CEO, to introduce the organization. Ravi. All right. Thanks a lot, Sumit. Good morning, good evening, depending on where you joined the webinar from. Um, I'll give you a quick three minutes uh, rundown on, uh, on the organization. Um, super excited to uh, have this webinar with all of you demonstrating our differentiation here. Um, at a 30,000 feet, we are a 1,500 employees organization serving around 200 active customers today. Um, and our uh, unique differentiation has been enabling digital innovation by adopting the three switch approach, which is automate, migrate, innovate. That's the three switch approach. And everything that we do, we try to bring automation by leveraging our IP. As you can see, we have nine different digital solutions which enable us to automate. Uh, we've migrated various workloads, over 500 workloads we have migrated uh, across uh, the multi-cloud. Um, so if you go to the next slide, you'll see this is how we are organized today. The four horizons are the four various business units. Uh, as I said, we are a multi-cloud cutting across GCP, AWS, Oracle, and Azure. Today, we will focus, uh, our conversation will be a lot more around Oracle Cloud and Oracle EBS. But from your perspective, you can look at that as a multi-cloud. And then data monetization in transforming your BI and analytics into uh, big data and, and data on cloud. Application modernization, uh, you will see some of the unique solutions in how we modernize the application. For example, today's webinar is about how do we modernize EBS by using upgrade assist and cloud tester in accelerating that uh, upgrade that Sumit mentioned about. On top of it, it is digital innovation where you'll see a lot of our existing Oracle and SAP and Salesforce customers using some of our digital solutions. And most importantly, I'm seeing a significant traction in adoption of RPA for process automation, right? So whether it's AP process, AR process and so on. So you'll see we have solutions that sit on top of EBS for doing that. So those are the four horizons. Now, giving a quick snapshot, bringing you into the Oracle realm of things, as you see over 500 associates uh, working in just in the Oracle practice, uh, there were 100 active customers that we serve in the Oracle practice today. We are the number one Oracle's cloud partner. 
that means the number of workloads we migrated to Oracle Cloud. Um, and some marquee customers that cut across various verticals that you'll see various verticals in the next slide. But just to give you a snapshot, expertise that cut across full stack Oracle from EBS, PeopleSoft to middleware and data and database and cloud infrastructure, that's the full stack Oracle capabilities. Our approach has always been you know, platform led approach where you see a lot of IP, intellectual property that we bring in to accelerate things. So you will hear a lot more about EBS Cloud Upgrade Assist and Cloud Tester today. But in addition to that, we use Automass for automating the entire managed application using artificial intelligence. So we cut down the managed services cost. Docs is about DevOps automation and, and some of the other IP that is relevant for the Oracle customers. ServiceNext is our RPA platform to process automate your order to cash, procure to pay, hire to retire. From a service offering perspective, something that is very unique about us is we believe in you know, you know, adoption that most customers have cloud first as the agenda, but very few are able to still embark on it because of the upfront investment that is required to transform to cloud. So over the last three years, we have successfully mastered the art of zero cost cloud migration. So you will see today how we are using this zero cost model for also upgrade, right? And this is going to be, uh, Sumit is going to spend some time on how that zero cost cloud migration model works. Here are, you know, the 200 active customers that I talked about that cut across these six verticals. And as you can see, some marquee customers across banking, across retail, healthcare, manufacturing is our biggest uh, vertical, you'll see a lot of customers that we've transformed into cloud in manufacturing, energy and other telco verticals like track four and others. So this is a quick snapshot of Sunera. I didn't want to take too much time on this. Let's get right into the, uh, the, the topic of the day. Over to you, Sumit. Thanks, Ravi. Uh, so why the curious case of Oracle upgrade? And uh, as many of you are already aware that Oracle has announced the end of premier uh, support for 12.13. So what does it mean? It means that all the comprehensive maintenance support for Oracle database, the fusion middleware, the application, that is going to end on this date. So what happens? So what are the options? Oracle is going to offer sustaining support. Now sustaining support, that will allow customers to retain the upgrade rights, and uh, access to the pre-existing fixes, assistance from the Oracle technical support and things like that. So this is sustaining, isn't it? At the same time, customer will face limitations and the limitations will be like limited maintenance. There'll be no patch fixes or upgrades, updates. There'll be low performance issue. There'll be security vulnerabilities. And this is a very, very important factor. All of you must have seen, experienced the CPC patches that are released. There are increased costs, and I'll share a glimpse of it in a subsequent slide, and things like that, compliance issues. and So point is sustaining of support is the option one. The next option, what Oracle has come up with is, we call it market-driven support. Now, what is market-driven support? It is way more than sustaining support because it will be offering patch fixes. It will be addressing few security vulnerabilities and things like that, right? At the same time, there'll still not be platinum service. There'll be still limited integration support. There'll still be payroll country limitations. There'll still be, uh, for example, if you have a new third-party product, you cannot get it certified. The architectural changes cannot be done. So it's still a very, very limited version of support. And what happens? The costing, the model way costing is calculated. So. You have to pay for extended support, sustaining support, and the market-driven support. So whatever you pay for your regular premier support, you are paying way more than that for the market-driven support and still getting less. So in short, what we are trying to tell you is if you are going for sustaining support or market-driven support at the end of this year on 31st December, it makes a lot of business sense and a lot of economic sense too to plan your upgrade almost immediately. 
So on this slide, I think I should invite our Srikant, our EVS and Cloud, the principal architect, to take you through the experience that we have with upgrades and talk to you about some of our, uh, our differentiators like Cloud Tester and EVS Upgrade Assist platform. Srikant, over to you. Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to today's webinar on EBS Upgrade. Uh, key things that would be presented today is the platforms, uh, the Kemli Retropix platform, and also uh, the test automation platform. We'll have a brief demo of those. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to post them in your chat room. So these are some of the key upgrades. Uh, along with a uh, lift and shift into cloud infrastructure that uh, Sunera Tech has taken up uh, in uh, 20, year 2021. And if you look at these Atkins, these are the total chem lists, as you can see, and the uh, impacted chem lists and the cloud we have migrated to. And the ownership, uh, either we have taken complete ownership of this project, or it was a joint effort, as you see in World Fuel. It's a joint effort between World Fuel team and our teams. Uh, and the version they're currently on and the version we are upgrading them to. And these are the project start date and end date. These are a few of the key projects we have undertaken, uh, which are complex uh, from a complexity perspective and all. And there are some customers uh, whom we have not migrated to cloud. Uh, it is just a pure play upgrade. And the cloud, uh, majority of the customers we have migrated to cloud are on either Oracle cloud infrastructure or AWS. And based on, uh, so I would like to get to the platforms based on all of our past experiences. We all have done numerous EBS upgrades. As you see, 80% of the effort uh, goes into Kemli retrofit. When I, when I say Kemli, it's customizations. Kemli retrofit and testing. And testing is by development teams, IT business analysts, business users, and third-party applications. So it's a huge effort uh, that goes into testing. And rest of the 20% of the effort is by the database administrators who upgrade the tech stack and so on. So what Sunera Tech has done is, we have automated the 80% of the effort, the Kemli retrofit and testing effort, reducing the total effort by 60%. And overall, reducing the total upgrade effort cost and timeline by around 50%. And more importantly, see, any upgrade is involved with risk. Since we are doing this through automation and platforms, we're significantly reducing the risk, the surprises, the last minute surprises, because the Kemri retrofit and testing is being done by platforms automation. And the other most important factor is when we automate the testing, there's less involvement or minimal involvement by the business users. And most of us struggle for the availability of the business users. We don't take up upgrade projects because business users are not available. Since we are automating the entire validation and testing, uh, business users need not be involved to that extent. So I'll get to the free upgrade assessment report in a minute. But before that, I would like to show the Kemli retrofit, how the platform works. Uh, let me So you all can log into the Kemli retrofit platform. So if you can type in ebsupgrade.com, or ebsupgrade.com, you can register here for a free trial. And once you register, you can log in. So what we do here is, it's a four-step process. 
first we identify all your chemleys because there are a lot of customers who do not know what chemleys they have and the second step is we identify the chemleys which are impacted by the upgrade and this you could do it yourself you have to download the analyzer script and the instructions how to execute and after you execute the output file you could select your current version let's say your current version is 1213 and uh, go to version the 2b version is 12210 you select the file and upload the file what it does is it gives you a complete analysis of which of the chemicals are impacted by the upgrade and uh, i will get to that report uh, soon and here this is the first step you are identifying your chemicals which are impacted by the upgrade then the second step which is the most important step is the chemical retrofit and this is where it takes majority of the time and this is all done manually by the developers what we have done is we have automated this to a large extent so again you download the source code extractor script by running this script all the source code of your chemistry uh you get it from your own systems and then you upload that source code and then you click on the retrofit auto retrofit when you click on this auto retrofit that source code is modified to be compatible with the new version or the to be version to be upgraded version and there are a lot of features in this uh, platform where you can see the retrofit status these are all the source code uh, and the uh, so you have here which schema object type object name pre retrofit code and post retrofit code and also the log history this also gives you what has been changed and also it lists out the different uh, the number of objects which are dependent on this source code the log history has quite uh, detailed what has changed so you can always review here these are all the things which have been changed by our automation and if there was no automation this would have been changed by the developers manually and it gives the line number of the source code what has been changed and complete details then the next feature of this platform is once the retrofit is done now you want to deploy this code first into your development environment then your test qa and eventually to production so it has uh, you can deploy it has the features to migrate or promote code from one environment to other and it also keeps an history of everything what has been done what has been promoted where it has been promoted and so on and along with this we also do a free assessment report let me get to the free assessment report so what we do for customers is uh, we run uh, this platform against customers current version of ebs environment whether you are on 11510 1213 and so on what it does is it gives this report and this report identifies all the different types of objects which you see on the left side or the y axis and the number of objects on the x axis so the pink color represents the total count and the blue color represents those are the number of objects impacted by the upgrade to the version you want to upgrade if you want to upgrade to different version the impact would be different and the minute that the bar charts you have the columnar view of the same thing total count and impacted then we also give a tentative project schedule depending on the complexity of the customizations 
In the previous slide, we also read the complexity of the customization, how complex a particular customization is from a retrofit perspective. And based on that, what we do is we give you a tentative project schedule. If you look at this, this projects from week one, it goes all the way from uh, week 33, which includes the post go live support. So in this, if you look at these two line items, the first one is the functional impact assessment and configuration. Again, this is also driven by automation based on the current version of your environment and the 2B version, we give all the assessment of all the business process and functional flows that have changed. And that's done during this period. And at the same time, the Kemli retrofit is done by the platform. And more importantly, the test automation, which I will be talking about soon, test automation using cloud tester. All your test scripts, which are manual test scripts or automated test scripts, if you have any, they will be automated in this period. So majority of your automation work will be done from week three to week 15. The first three weeks is for the database administrator to do a trial run of the upgrade. And then you start your CRP one during this period and this is SIT and so on. You get a complete project schedule, the EBS upgrade schedule. And if there is, uh, if you are including cloud migration along with the upgrade, most of the customers are doing that because to avoid duplicate testing, this would take additional three weeks to migrate to cloud. And most of the customers we have done, we have done both majority of them. And then you have the resources which are required for this project, the effort. The project manager, one resource from all the way through the project. Then the technical people, EBS developers, week four, you need seven, week five, 14. And then again, they go ramp down from week 24 and so on. Similarly, the functional consultants and the application DBS. So this, this gives you a ballpark effort, timeline, and cost of the project. And as I said, either we have done projects, we have taken complete ownership of the project and it was a joint effort. Customer had seven EBS developers. We had seven from our team when they needed 14 and so on. Moving to the next slide. So this, this is total family objects is about 5,857. Impacted is this many. Uh, this many percentage is impacted. If this retrofit was done without our platform, it would have taken 18,000 plus hours. With the auto retrofit platform, it takes about 11,000 hours. That's about 35%. Similarly, the testing, if you had done testing, manually tested it, it would have taken this many hours. And this testing is only by the IT, this hours. It's not by the business users. We have not considered the business users time here. And if you have tested everything with Cloud Tester, it would have taken only 1800 hours. And this 1800 hours to, is to automate all your testing, like one customer, we have built about uh, close to 800 test cases. We have automated 800 test cases in about two months. And whatever automation we have done, those assets can be used post upgrade. Those assets don't go waste. So this is the effort to onboard that many number of test cases. So overall, the Kemli retrofit and the testing, if you take it in the world, we are able to reduce the upgrade timeline cost significantly. And it depends from one customer to another customer. So let me go to the cloud tester before uh, we go to the other part. Sorry, I'm switching screens because uh, this is, uh, I had to demo. So cloud tester is an automated testing platform
So it's an enterprise level automated testing platform, which works for every on-premise applications like Oracle, eBusiness Suite, SAP, and so on. And also cloud applications, whether it is Oracle HCM, ERP, or Workday, Salesforce, and so on. It works for both SaaS and on-premise. Some of the uh, key features of cloud tester is integrations testing, complete automation of integrations, whether it is inbound integrations or outbound integrations. When I say inbound integrations from application to application or outbound integrations with your trading partners, with the customers or suppliers and so on. All those integrations could be tested, could be automated. The testing of those could be automated. And whichever software you use, whether you're using Oracle Fusion or MuleSoft or Dell Boomi or whatever. So Cloud Tester does functional and regression testing of all the business flows, all the process flows, and integrations testing, end-to-end -end testing. When I talk about end-to-end -end testing, if you want to perform, uh, you're, you're capturing your customer in Salesforce and then you're moving on to order management of EBS, and then sh you're shipping from JDE, JD Edwards or Red Prairie, Cloud Tester with single test case can perform testing across different applications, Salesforce, Oracle eBusiness, JDE. And we also do performance testing. Performance testing from both aspects. One is load test, especially when we move to cloud, we do load testing and also we test the performance of critical business flows. So all that could be achieved using this platform. Let me get to the demo of the platform. Cloud Tester is used by close to about 100 plus customers now. Uh, they are EBS customers. There are Oracle Cloud application customers, uh, Salesforce, and uh, Workday customers. So the unique features, uh, I'm going to present just the unique features. The way we organize these, as I said, it's an enterprise level platform. You can define your applications, uh, Oracle HCM, EBS, and so on. You can define mobile apps, because it has the capability to test mobile apps. PPM Cloud, Capability Test, PeopleSoft, JDE, Pega, and any other application, Oracle. Okay, we also have NetSuite customers. And then you define your products, what kind of products this is, and you define your modules within that application and so on. So you get a complete view of where your automation status is, how many of the test cases you're continuing to test manually versus how many of them have you automated. And some of the key features is the way we automate our test case is we don't write test scripts. This is scriptless. When I say scriptless, actually we perform the transaction, any business flow or functional flow. This is receivables to general ledger. I'm taking an example from EBS. We actually perform the transaction. And if you look at these screens, we capture the screen while we are performing the transaction. And at the end of the transaction, Cloud Tester automatically creates the test script. We don't have to do the manually write test scripts. A lot of our customers, you can download these. A lot of our customers use this, especially during uh, EBS upgrades. They use this for all, whatever business flows have changed. They use this uh, for training, for training the business users, because it has quite a bit of documentation along with uh, uh, screenshots like navigate uh, to receivables, transactions, and so on. So this is one of the unique features of the cloud tester, where we do, don't document the test case, because test case documentation requires a lot of time. 
uh, manual documentation. Uh, this documentation gets generated automatically while we are actually building the test case. So your documentation is always up to date. When a test case fails, we rebuild the test case and this documentation automatically gets updated. So this is one unique feature of Cloud Tester. And then when we talk about automation with Cloud Tester, it's 100% automated. We do not need testers or test engineers. We do not need uh, business analysts to babysit the test case. When I say to babysit the test case, most of the tools, testing tools, we have to key in the data every time you execute. Some data is static and some data, some test cases would require dynamic data. Every time you run, you cannot run it with the same, like let's say order number in order management, you cannot run it with the same number. So Cloud Tester has the capability to dynamically get the data from the systems and execute these test cases. So these test cases can be scheduled overnight, any number and have them run overnight and the next morning you have all your test results. And this is where you can reduce how your upgrade time. There's no manual testing, whether by IT business analysts or business users. And then from a compliance perspective or the SOX compliance or any compliance, you have a complete history. What has been executed? Okay, this test case has been executed so many times. And it took, okay, the first time it took 5.23 minutes and the last time it took eight minutes so oh, there's a performance degradation and then you can set this up when i was talking about performance when you're upgrading your ebs instance and you can see this particular transaction there's a degradation in performance okay let me look at this and you can check that out and again run history provides again the same kind of documentation it captures every screenshot what has been done and uh, pass, fail, and so on, it goes through. And again, this can be, you can just export this into a PDF file. So when the business users want to validate, they really don't have to test the transaction. They can just go through these results files and see, okay, what has been tested and whether the test was a pass or fail. This is the execution. We're talking about the execution. Similar documentation as what you have seen when we build the test case. So this is some other unique features of Cloud Tester. And then, as I said, test sets. These, these are test sets you build. As, uh, as I said, you do not have to execute each test case. Like you have 1,000 test cases, you don't have to execute. You build your test set and you execute your test set. And the test set, and the test set, you can uh, define your dependencies. You can define your dependencies. Uh, let me create a test set. So you can add any number of test cases to create a test set and you can say, if there's a dependency, you can say this needs to execute after the other and so on. So the system takes care of all the dependencies. So this is how you build a regression test case. And let's say I have thousand test cases. You build a test set with that thousand test set, thousand test cases, and you only execute the test set. You don't have to execute each one of the thousand test cases. And this can be scheduled. There's a scheduler and all that. This can be scheduled. Sumit, uh, over to you. Thanks, Shikhan. I think uh, I think beautifully summarized. Uh, so a uh, couple of things, uh, as uh, Shikant mentioned, uh, the whole upgrade is a, a three-stage process. Uh, we are having uh, assessment in the first stage where we are making sure that uh, uh, we understand the scope, 
The second stage is the Camerida automation, the, that where all the uh, custom objects are automatically uh, upgraded to the next version so that you save 50 to 60% of consultant time. And third stage is end-to-end -end testing automation, which uh, uh, saves a lot of business user time, a lot of functional time. And this is how through this three-stage model, we are able to cut down the scope, we are able to accelerate the project, we are able to cut down the bugs, and able to shorten the cost, uh, the whole project schedule at a lesser cost and, uh, and uh, lower risks to you. Now, uh, I know we are running short of time, so I'll quickly give you a broad uh, perspective of our unique differentiator, which we call it zero cost cloud migration. And essentially as a business leader, right? So you are very well aware of the power of cloud. I mean, once migrated to cloud, you can leverage the out of possibilities, the analytics, the AI, RPA, cloud native applications and more. So, and you are also aware of the cost of lost opportunities for not migrating to cloud. So the, when it comes to migration to cloud, the question is not of why, but when. And that is where our interesting offering called zero, uh, zero cost cloud migration comes because what Sunera Tech does to show our commitment to enabling our cloud uh, customers, we invest upfront for both the cloud infrastructure on your behalf, possibly as an MSP, as well as for the migration services. So you do not need to identify any kind of funds to pay the existing service contracts, as well as existing contracts to the uh, uh, equipment or, or the cloud organizations, as well as to Sundar Tech for consulting companies. So what happens is, only when you are live in cloud and your users have certified that yes, we are go live, we have migrated to cloud and you start realizing the benefits, then you start paying us from the savings that you are realizing as part of your digital journey to cloud. So this is the power of zero cost cloud migration. So essentially we are addressing all your concerns for cloud migration by taking away all your risks, converting the CapEx to OpEx, I'm sure the office of the CFO will definitely be pleased by that. And we are offering one of the best in-class managed services experience. And as Ravi said at the beginning, we are the number one cloud partner for Oracle from last couple of years. So I know, I know, I mean, at a very broad level, I we in a short on time because I want to take a couple of questions, but this is a, a quick synopsis of one of our customers where we saved 42% by migrating the customer from on-prem EVS to cloud under the same zero-cost cloud migration program. So this is the power, right? So I'll take a pause here. I know there have been a couple of questions and Shrikant and Ravi, uh, I wanted to post some of them to you. Uh, uh, so uh, thank you for uh, those questions. So uh, I got the first one. Uh, the question is, uh, this is on assessment. And the question is, do I, you give report or do you give pricing to? Shikant, you want to take that? Yeah, the free, the free assessment uh, comes with the effort estimate timeline and also the pricing if you have to do that, if you have to take over the entire upgrade project. Okay. The second one was that, uh, do I get a zero cost without doing the upgrade or is it only with upgrade? Yeah, go ahead, Shikant. Okay. Yeah, the zero cost cloud migration, uh, these two, uh, these two are mutually exclusive. The only reason we have taken up these two in this webinar is because most of our customers are doing both at the same time to save on costs and also the time to test. So when you do a cloud migration, there's a lot of testing that is required. So they're combining upgrade with cloud migration, but there are customers where we have done cloud migration uh, without upgrade. Like Sumit pointed out, AJ Gallegal, uh, we did not do the upgrade. We just migrated them to cloud. And similarly, the, uh, there's a couple of more customers. So yes, the zero cost is applicable. Either we do upgrade or the migration. Thanks, Shikant. I think we may have time to take one more question. This question is like, if I am in 11i, how will this tool work? Well, you have seen the previous slide. 
there were two customers uh, world fuel services and there were one more customer i think it was platform both are on 11510 so the tool works for all versions which are above and beyond 11510 or uh, to the latest version good i think uh, yeah so uh, those were some of the questions that we had uh, received on the chat uh you can uh, i have I mean, please feel free to post those questions i have put my uh, email id you can contact me at sumit.sharma at soneratech.com and uh, please visit the www.ebsupgrade.com and think uh, uh, i think there was some question on uh, uh, how do we uh, get the free upgrade assessment so all you need is to just go to www.ebsupgrade.com you register there you don't even need to talk to us and you can download the free assessment uh, tool and you can run it and if you want us to uh, do the analysis for you uh, uh, we can get in touch with you otherwise you can use this and get that analysis at your end even without involving us so that is our commitment uh, to the making sure all the customers who are out there we want to help them upgrade to the next version uh, thank you for uh, Uh, your time and thanks for all those questions that were posted thanks sorry we couldn't take one or two questions but uh, please reach out to me and uh, sunera tech visit our website and we'll be there to address any other questions that you have thanks to our uh, panelists ravi and shikant for your time and uh, have a good rest of the day thank you guys